Um, all right, so this week we're going to talk about how to use Facebook. And uh, why we're starting with Facebook is it's pretty much the, the 800-pound gorilla social network that you have to be on. Um, like it or not, whether it's cool or not this week, doesn't really matter. It is the social network that your fans are going to be on. So it's one of the... It's one of the four that I, I always advise people that you need to be on. You need to be on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. Those are the ones that are for sure. So how to use Facebook. Um, and, and, and we're talking about this from a almost a business standpoint. Your band having a page on Facebook is a business. And you have to operate it like that. So... So, Facebook means nothing if you do nothing to convert the fans that you have. And convert means turn that Facebook person into traffic back to your website, get an email address, a purchase of your album, sharing, or liking. You want somebody to do something on your Facebook page. That's the most important thing. And I want to just kind of start with, and this may be all basic, but it, it's interesting how it is still confusing to a lot of people. The difference between a profile page and subscribing on Facebook. The profile is your individual person's profile. You as a person has a profile. You can't install apps on your profile. It's very... Compared to a Facebook page, it's very bare bones. People do not like your profile. They friend they become they send a friend request on your profile. The page is for your band, your business. That's where people go to click the like button. That's where you install many different kind, kinds of apps to um, help manage your band online. The subscribe button on your profile is very much like Twitter where people can just follow you without becoming friends and they will see whatever you post on your profile that is public. So it's it's good to make sure you understand the difference between all of these. A band, even a solo performer, should have a page. Even if the page is the same name as your profile, you need something to differentiate fans from friends and family. Friends and family are on your profile. There's no need to have fans become friends on your personal Facebook profile. Keep that for your friends and family. Fans go to your page. So look at Facebook and what you do as a big reality show um, in that your fans want to see everything you do. They want to know about everything you do. And the first thing you as the artist need to understand is what is your limit? As in what are you willing to share with people publicly on Facebook? as a band example one of my clients um his family said yeah go ahead you can share anything you want if we go out to dinner or whatever but his daughter said i don't want to ever have my picture shared on your artist page so he knows the limit he never to post the photo of his daughter everything else is fair game and he can go ahead and post anything he wants. You as an artist need to understand what you're comfortable with up front. Because as you get more active on Facebook, as your fan base grows on Facebook, you're going to get yourself into a situation where all of a sudden somebody's going to want you to post something. And you may be uncomfortable with it. And as we all know, it's too late to get uncomfortable with it after you've posted it. 
once it's up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, anywhere, it's out there forever. And we all know you can delete stuff and it will still be out there. So it's better for you guys to understand right now that, you know what, I'm never going to post family photos on my band page. I keep that for my personal profile. But understand what your limit is. Once you know, go ahead, show everything. Talk about it all. Open up about anything and everything you do that you're comfortable with. Basically, let your ego run wild. You are a rock star on Facebook, and your fans are looking to you to be that rock star that they want to follow. Um, and by all means, if you guys have questions, let me know as we go along, or feel free to save them to the end as well. Um, obviously, the big thing on all social networks, but really important on Facebook, is engagement and interaction. And there's something I call the 80-20 rule, which I advise all my clients on. 80% of what you post should not be business-related, meaning it's not a post about buy my CD, buy my ticket, buy my T-shirt. 80% should be about you, the person, your personality, who you are, what you're doing, your life. 20% of what you post can be business-related, selling. There's an old saying that people will buy you before they buy your product, which means before somebody's going to buy your CD, they really want to know who you are. They want a connection with you, the person. If there's a personal connection, then it's much easier for them to put down 10 bucks to buy something to support you. And this 80-20 rule applies... Even if you post 10 posts a week, that only means two of those posts can be about promoting your band. So as you look at that and what that means, when you really do need to promote something, you have to have a lot of other content ready to promote, to post. A lot of other content of, hey, here's us rehearsing. Here's us driving somewhere. Here's a picture of a lyric sheet. Here's me hanging out at a guitar center or a local record store. You need to get a lot of that content so you can give yourself room to make more posts to promote what you need to promote. Um, it's very important that you know who your audience is. And obviously they're going to be fans, but what I mean by know your audience is what do they like? What do they don't like? You know, a, a perfect example is somebody like Kiss is going to know that their audience doesn't care about Miley Cyrus. They're not going to post something about Miley Cyrus because their fans don't like it. Their fans are going to like things that are about Ozzy Osbourne, Kiss, Poison, Motley Crue understand what it is that they like, understand who they are, as in how old are your fans, um, when did they grow up, what generation are they from, you know, keep in mind that somebody like Kiss knows that their fans are probably going all the way back to the 70s. So they can post a lot of stuff that is, boy, you remember the old Atari 2600 video game system? that first came out, a lot of kids don't have a clue what that is, but their fans are going to know exactly what that is and it's going to connect with them. Opposite of that is, if your fans are 15 years old, it doesn't pay to talk about 8-track tapes. It doesn't pay to talk about, you know, you don't necessarily talk that much about vinyl records and old stereo cabinets because a 15 year old kid didn't live with that it's not something that's going to connect to them so understand who your audience is understand what they're excited about what movies they like what music they listen to besides you 
what books they read, what TV they watch, because all of this is going to help you post content that they will engage with. The other thing that's really important to remember is the number one thing that any fan is going to want above free music, above a free t-shirt, above even meeting the band, is they want to be recognized for being a fan. And it might have happened to you guys. I know it's happened to me. There's an artist you like, and you post something, and the artist answers it, or the artist retweets it, or the artist shares it on their Facebook page. You feel incredible because that meant the artist recognized what you did, liked what you did, and felt they should share it with everybody else. That recognition is so important, and that recognition doesn't cost you anything other than clicking the like button, sharing a post, saying thank you. You can give your fans so much recognition without investing a huge amount of time, and you'll get so much more out of it. So always remember, recognize that your fans are important. Recognize that they're 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 recognize that they are a fan. So, I don't know how many of you are familiar with what Edge Rank is. This is something that's a little secret formula that Facebook uses to determine how many people see a post that you make. A lot of people might think that when you make a post on your Facebook page for your band, everybody who clicked the like button is going to see it in their Facebook wall. That's wrong. Um, the, a the actual truth is maybe if you're lucky, 14%, 10%, even less of the people who click the like button are going to actually see the post you make. And why that happens is Facebook is determining whether the stuff you post is actually interesting or not. And how they do that is based on past engagement and interaction of your posts on your page. So the more people that have in the past shared your posts, liked your posts, commented on your post, means the more people in the future Facebook is going to show your posts to. If nobody likes anything and does anything with your post, Facebook pretty much assumes nobody likes what you're posting. Therefore, we're not going to show anything that you post to anybody who likes your page. And you're going to have to end up spending money to get your own fans to see what you post. And this, this can drive um, bands crazy, as in, why do I have to spend money to make my own fans see what I post. Well, it's because what you post probably is crap, and your fans don't like it. A fan doesn't want to see a post every day that says, buy my CD. That's boring. None of us want to see that. They want to see photos from the dressing room, from your rehearsals. They want to see interesting, fun, and entertaining things. So... Basically, Facebook is going to reward you when your fans like your content. They're going to reward you by showing more fans your content. And Facebook is going to penalize you when fans don't like your content by showing your content to less people. So it's really important to keep that in mind that you're not looking for engagement simply to talk to your fans. You're looking for engagement because the more engagement that happens, the more people, the more fans are going to see what you post. It's impossible to promote your band if nobody sees anything you post. So this concept is really important to keep in mind with everything you do on Facebook. Your goal 
is to get more people to interact with every single post you make. So a big question that, that a lot of people will often ask me is, how often should I then post every day? And there's not an easy answer to that because it differs based on each band. The more you know your fans, what they like, what they will interact with, the more you can post. So you could get by easily with three to four posts per day on a page if you know what they like. If you have no clue what they like and three or four posts a day get zero interaction, you better stop posting that much stuff. You better go back and look at what you're posting. And on average, a Facebook post has a life of about three hours. So three hours after you've posted it, it's done. People are not going to see it anymore. What that means is what I see so often is some band might go, all right, I'm going to make three posts today. And they make all three posts within one hour. And that's wasting all that content. You should make one post, three hours later, another post, three hours later, another post. Sometimes that can be difficult because you may not be around to make one of those posts. You can schedule posts on Facebook. It's quite easy to just schedule a post in the future and say, I want this post to go live at this hour, on this day, so you can schedule it all. There's no excuse for somebody to make four posts within 10 minutes. Facebook um, provides a wealth of data. So besides what you would see in the obvious post stats, as in when you look at a post, it says 12 comments, 24 shares, 50 likes, and that's all very important. On your Facebook page, there's something they call insights, which are basically web stats on everything that happens on, on your Facebook page. And you should make a habit of, I'm not saying once a day, but maybe once a week looking at your insights. It will tell you exactly which posts are working, which posts are not, which posts are getting the most engagement, which posts are not being engaged. It will tell you if you post a video, how many people have watched that video? How many minutes have watched? What's the average amount of minutes people have watched? How many people have unfollowed your page because of that post or that video? You will learn demographics about your fans. This is really valuable. You will learn the breakdown of male to female. You will learn the breakdown of their age, what ages your fans are. You will learn what countries they live in, what cities they live in, what languages they speak. And this may sound a bit overkill at first, but think about this. You want to put together maybe your first tour. Whether it's a tour of your state, the Midwest, the U.S., you can go into your Facebook insights and find out where your fans are, the exact cities they are within states. You can then reach out to clubs in those locations and go, yeah, I'd like to book a show. I've got 500 fans in your town. And you can then target your posts in the future directly to those fans because every single post can be geo-targeted, which is really important to understand because as your fan base grows, if you're doing a show in South Dakota, 
it doesn't pay to promote that show to somebody who lives in California, let alone in Germany. If you do that, the engagement for that post is going to be low because the overall number of people who saw that post are not going to engage with it because why would a fan in Germany care about something that's happening in South Dakota? They're not. So if you geotarget your post to only show it to your fans who live in South Dakota and then you get engagement on it, you're getting engagement on a smaller group of people, but it's better engagement, if that makes sense. So when you start promoting tours, you can make posts that promote your shows in each city that you're going to. It's a little more work because you're going to make a lot of posts, but those posts are only going to be seen by the people who need to see it. And your Facebook insights are going to be telling you what cities, what states, what countries those fans are in. If you are a band, um, and, and, and one of my bands is this way, my, one of my clients is Accept, they're a band that's originally from Germany. They have a big fan base in Germany. So obviously a lot of their fans speak German. So, if I want to make a post to the fans in Germany, I will know that they, the majority of them, don't speak English. Why make a post in English to somebody who can't read it? I need to translate it. Now, an interesting brand new feature on Facebook, in the past, you used to have to translate it yourself. Go to Google Translate or somewhere else, translate the post, and then put it in there. Now Facebook has translation built right in. So if I make a post in English, I can say, Facebook, could you translate this to German, please? So the German version is what gets posted. Facebook does all that work for me. And obviously I want to geotarget a post in German only fans in Germany. Why make why why show a post in, in German to everybody in the U.S.? They're not going to be able to read it. So your insights that Facebook provides are really really valuable as your as your band starts to grow and you need to know who your fans are not just from a marketing standpoint, but from a business standpoint. Managers, booking agents, record labels, anybody that you work with is going to want to know who are your fans. And and you don't want to just say, oh, I think it's a bunch of guys. It's a bunch of kids. No, you want to say it's 60% male, 40% female. Um, 30% of my fans are from the age 13 to 17. Then I got X amount in this age group, and then I got an X amount in this age group. That information is really valuable because you're going to spend your money differently in each age group. Obviously, how you market to a 40-year-old is different than how you market to an 18-year-old. How you market to someone in Europe is different than how you market to someone in the U.S. versus South America versus Asia. Insights is going to give you all of this data. And you, and, and you need to pay attention to this insights, like I said, moving forward. Because you will learn things that you didn't know. You might all of a sudden discover... For whatever reason, you've got a hotbed of fans in some state that you didn't know about. That's valuable information for you. So Facebook has, we're, we're all pretty aware of Facebook events. And there's a love-hate relationship with Facebook events. Um... The hate is such that, and you guys may have experienced all of this as well, 
we get spammed with so many Facebook events. Everybody sends us an event invite. Even for events we could never attend. I get invited to band shows in Italy. Why is a band in Italy inviting me to come to their show? I, you know, unless they're going to pay my airfare, I'm not going there. And unfortunately, most invites are spam like that. The person sending the invite doesn't think about who they're sending it to. So I, along with everybody else, have become conditioned to pretty much ignore most invites that we get for events. Because a small percentage of them we only care about. So what that means to you is if you want to use events and do it effectively, you need to spend the extra time to only invite the people who could actually attend or care about this event. And, and Facebook, unfortunately, doesn't make that easy. So that's why people just invite everybody. But if you don't do it the right way, your events are going to become worthless very quickly, and you're going to be wasting your time. But if you choose to do it, um, you know, one of the interesting things is you can... You can use a Facebook event for an internet-only event, meaning it's not only for going to a show, a physical location, but I've used it for the world premiere of this band's new video. It's going to happen this Friday at 12 noon worldwide. You can use the event as a way to communicate what's going on, share the information. So keep in mind you can use events for things that are not just physical locations. You don't have to sell tickets. It's just a way to to create an event, to create, to create some excitement around an event. Um, Facebook ads are really, really important. You know, so many people ask me if I'm going to spend some money to promote my band online, where to do it? Do it on Facebook. And, and the reason is the ads on Facebook are so incredibly targeted. Everything all of us do on Facebook every day is logged and recorded by Facebook. You went to this page, you clicked like, you commented here. Anything you do, Facebook is keeping track of all of that data. And they let advertisers use that data to target a message. So, uh, example, you're, you're, a, you're a heavy metal band, and you sit here and go, well, you know... Our fans also like Judas Priest, okay? You're not interested in fans right now in Europe. You are only interested in your local area. So you can sit down on Facebook and say, I want to show my ad to people who are between the ages of 13 and 24 who live in South Dakota, who like like Life. Judas Priest? Priest. You could throw other bands in there. You could say like Judas Priest, like Scorpions, like Accept. Um, you might even sit here and say and like um, the local radio station. Or it might even be they like Badlands Pawn. Remember, anything that people can interact with on Facebook, you can target those fans so maybe you did a or are going to do a show here you're going to do a show at badlands and you want to advertise and promote the show well gee isn't it great that you can now go out and say i want to show this ad to people who like badlands they would probably be a very good target market for you to promote to 
and you basically create your ad, set your target, set a budget, and you can do budgets as little as five, ten dollars a day, or you can set a total budget and say, I want to spend a hundred bucks for the next month. Facebook is not going to overspend. So don't worry, you're not going to a month from now all of a sudden get a, a credit card bill for $2,000 because you forgot to turn off the ad. When it hits that budget amount, it stops. But you should be paying attention to your ad every day to see if it's working. And in an ideal world, you're going to create what's called a B ads. You're creating multiple ads to the same target. The difference might be a different photo, a different copy, to see which one works best. You find the right photo, then maybe you adjust the target. Maybe Judas Priest isn't the right target market you're finding out. Maybe Ozzy Osbourne works better. You will find that out because Facebook every day will give you stats to tell you how many times your ad was viewed, how many times it was clicked, how many likes you got on your page based on that ad, how much it costs you per like. And that's really important. So if you're using this to get new, new fans, which is a great way to use Facebook, you can find out that it's costing you three cents per like to get a new fan, or it's costing you 70 cents per like to get a new fan. You can play with these Facebook ads to adjust those targets so you can adjust and hopefully drive that cost per like down, 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 so it's finally stable. And then, you know, after a couple of weeks of testing, you're like, all right, I just, I know it, it costs four cents to acquire a new fan. You want a thousand fans? Do the math. There's exactly how much you have to spend to get a thousand new fans. Or if you just have a set budget, I'm going to spend 200 bucks. You can roughly do the math the other way and, you know, four cents a fan, boom, there's how many fans you can expect. This is a great, great way to find new fans on Facebook because you can't wait for the fans to just stumble across you and find you. It'll take forever for you to build up a fan base. You have to go out and find your fans. And you find your fans through targeting ads like this. And it's the simplest process of fans who like this band should like our band. And therefore, I'm going to put an ad in front of those fans. And an, a certain percentage are going to click the like button. And now you've got another like on your page. And obviously what happens when they click like is we go back to what we talked about earlier. You have to start engaging with them. You have to start answering their questions on them. You have to recognize them. You have to get them involved because they don't want to just sit there and wait for something to happen. So one of the great benefits of of uh, a Facebook page is you can add additional functionality to the page through the use of applications. This is, again, as I said, something you can't do on a Facebook personal profile. And there's a few really important applications that you, without fail, almost every artist page should have installed. First one is an First iTunes one is app. This basically puts an this iTunes store, store right on your Facebook page. And you'll see here, and, 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 and I'll send everybody the copy of the slide deck, but here's the URL where you go to get this app and configure it. 
and you basically can configure this little app as to what art what what artist in iTunes do you want displayed. So it's not displaying all of iTunes, it's only displaying your music. You can customize the look of this iTunes app. You can feature a certain album if you've got multiple albums, you can feature it right out of the album you want. It gets embedded into your Facebook page. When a fan clicks the tab at the top for iTunes, it opens up a little window right in Facebook that's a player and a store. So they can get a 90-second sample right within your Facebook page. They can make a purchase right within your Facebook page. So obviously at some point you want to be selling your music. iTunes is where... It, it, by by default, you you really have to have your music in iTunes. Install this app, and it's it's now available for people on your Facebook page. It's free to use the app. There's no cost. It literally takes about two minutes to configure it. So another important app. Hopefully, at some point, you're going to be doing live shows, whether it's live shows in your local town, in your region, your state, whatever it might be. You need to tell your fans what your shows are. In the past, you might use the Facebook events to do that, but that's a lot of work, and we talked about the downside of Facebook events. There's an app called Bands in Town that you should install and basically it's a tour dates listing for your Facebook page. You go in and you set up either individually or a bulk load your tour dates. The date of the show, the show time, the venue, the city, the state, the country, um, multiple ticket links. You could put in a pre-sale ticket link, a regular ticket link, a VIP ticket link. Um, you got the address to the venue. You can put in other descriptions like you're playing a bill, opening for somebody else. And then it displays all of this information on a tab on your Facebook page for tour dates. When somebody goes there, there's the date and there's a link for buy tickets. And they click the buy tickets link and it takes them out of bands in town to wherever the ticket is. And that ticket link can be anything from Ticketmaster to a local venue's ticketing system to whatever you want it to be. It also, fans in town will share a lot of this the show data to other third-party websites that are, are sources on the internet for people to find tour dates. So it, it's a way to distribute your dates elsewhere. Um, a couple um, great couple things about Bands, bands in Town bands is it has some really has incredible, incredible auto promotion, promotion tools. tools. And what this means what is, this is your, fans your fans will will track you. Track it's called you. tracking you in Bands in Town. They're following you as in I Want to Know Tour Dates for this band. Just like they follow you, uh, follow you on Twitter, like your page on on Facebook, on Bands in Town, they track you. When you announce a new tour date, Bands in Town automatically sends out a notice to all of your fans in the region of that show, saying your band just announced a new show. So there's no more putting it on the fan to keep coming back and checking for new tour dates. Fans in town will automatically tell you when there's a date coming to town. It will so it, it notifies you of when the date is announced. A month out from the date, it'll send out another automatic notice, and this is a geo-targeted post on Facebook. 
If the fans have opted in to receive emails from bands in town, they'll get an email from bands in town. There's also a, a consumer smartphone app that if the fans are tracking and they have the smartphone app, they'll get a notice on their smartphone 30 days out from the show saying, hey, don't forget, this band has a show in 30 days. A week out from the show, it'll automatically send out a notice saying, don't forget, this band has a show in one week. Tomorrow night, don't forget, this band has a show. Tonight, this band is playing. Bands in town will do all this automatically. It will promote your shows to the people in the region who should care about it. Nobody else does this. Stuff. And, and having done a lot of tour promotion for artists, this type of promotion is incredible to have. Because otherwise, you have to do all of this stuff yourself manually, remembering to make a post, remembering to geotarget it. Bands in Town does it for you. Now, Bands in Town also has a lot of great data on the fans who are interested in your shows. So just like Facebook has insights on your fans, Bands in Town has data on your fans. And it'll tell you, of, if you've got 10,000 fans tracking your band, meaning they want to know tour dates, Bands in Town will tell you exactly what cities and countries your fans are in who want to know tour dates. This is so valuable for booking agents. Because a booking agent knows you have literally... 300 fans in this town that want to know when your band is going to play a show. And you can contact those 300 fans and let them know. That, that's, that's a dream when it comes to being able to promote your shows. So you need to install bands in town. It's free. It's, and, and the cool thing is it also will sync your data to your website. So you've built a website, you want to put tour dates on your website, you take a little bit of an iframe embed code from bands in town, put it on your website. Whenever you make a change to the tour dates on Facebook, it automatically reflects that change on your website. So there's no more worrying about, oh, I forgot to update my website, I got to remove dates all over the place. One place, it takes care of it. Another great app for your music is called Bandcamp. Now, it's like iTunes, another way to sell music, but Bandcamp lets you sell it, set the price, and you get the majority of the money. So on iTunes, where you don't get a huge majority of the sale, on Bandcamp, you're going to get a huge majority of the sale. Sale. iTunes, you can't you sell can't CDs, sell, CDs, you can't you sell T-shirts, you can't sell physical goods. Th iTunes, you can only sell your digital sell. downloads. Bandcamp lets Bandcamp you sell any, sell any product any you product want. You can sell your digital sell downloads, digital you can sell CDs, T-shirts, bundles, whatever you want. You put the bundles together. If it's the digital music that somebody buys, Bandcamp will automatically take care of delivering the music to them. If it's a physical good that they purchase, you are going to get sent an order file behind the scene that you then have to fulfill. That this Smith, that, that this fan, Joe Smith, bought my extra large T-shirt, here's his address, pack it up, ship it out to him. The money is going directly into your PayPal account right away. It's also a player and a store right on your Facebook page. Excuse me. It can also be embedded in your website. So it's another great option for selling your music online 
And there's no there's no big issue if you want to install iTunes and Bandcamp. I, I do it a lot because there, there are many fans who only trust buying from iTunes. But there are fans who have no problem buying a different quality download or a CD from somebody like Bandcamp. So go ahead and install them both. Um, I sort of want to end with this little little statement of, so if you want to increase likes and comments on your Facebook page, this is a little common tip or trick. Post something fun and happy if you want to get likes. And by that I mean, listen, may, maybe it's, I don't know, a picture of your pet. Seriously, I've, I've, had, I've had clients who have puppies. I'm like, post that puppy on your Facebook page. And the likes go through the roof. I mean, who doesn't like a picture of a cute puppy or a cute cat? It's what the Internet was invented for, basically, was sharing pictures of cats and dogs. Put something fun and happy up there, and everybody's going to click like. They may not have a comment about it, but they sure like it. If you really want to get people commenting and talking about something, maybe post something a little more controversial, something that's debatable, something that's a deeper question that, that requires people to get into a discussion. Now, saying this, I want to advise you, be very careful about posting political and religious posts on your Facebook page. I guarantee you, you're going to get a lot of comments, but they may not be comments you want or enjoy. People can get very passionate, aggressive when it comes to political and religious posts, and you do risk alienating some of your fans who may not agree with your views on those topics. So it might always be best to just sort of step back and never really get into the political, religious controversy and discussions as a band because you know no matter what you say, somebody is going to disagree with it. And they may take it personally and they may stop following you they may not like you because at a personal level they don't agree with your views and remember everything online is about making a personal connection with your fans you just don't want to make that personal connection over something that's a, a hot button that could that, that could upset people. You want to make that connection over something that that you have in common with your fans. You know, a, one, one example is one of my clients is, is, is a band called Dream Theater, and the lead guitarist, John Petrucci, loves to barbecue. And we did a, a, a live video chat with him a couple of years ago. And he did it from his backyard as he was barbecuing. And that really connected with the fans because they saw a side of him that they normally didn't see. They normally see him as a rock star, lead guitarist, awesome musician, touring the world. Here they saw a glimpse of him in his backyard barbecuing a chicken. And it, it showed a different side of him that nobody could get mad at that. And more importantly, some people connected with it because they're like, oh my God, I've got the same kind of grill because I love grilling like he does. Or they were asking him questions about what kind of sauce, you know, barbecue sauce do you use? And, it opens up a whole new world for your fans to connect. Um, so, with that, let me 